to really see under the surface of benzenes, we need to appreciate how electron donating and withdrawing groups modulate electron density within the ring and exert effects on reaction rate and site selectivity as a result. And we're going to start that process now with the discussion of electron density in substituted benzenes. So electron donating and withdrawing groups can give electron density to and take electron density from attached conjugated systems, and aromatic rings such as benzene are no exception. Donating and withdrawing groups act via resonance. We've seen that in the context of conjugated systems more broadly already, but they can also act through inductive effects. And these are really pi-type effects in the resonance realm versus sigma-type effects in the inductive effects realm. So resonance effects, these have to do with donating and withdrawing groups and pushing electrons as we've seen previously, but inductive effects involve sigma bonds dipoles and the polarization of sigma bonds, the effects that those partial charges have on electron density. And these groups can have big effects. If we look, for example, at benzaldehyde versus the electroneutral benzene versus aniline, we see that benzaldehyde is a pretty weak nucleophile. There's pretty low electron density in that uh, benzene ring relative to benzene, which is quite red. On the other side, aniline has a ring that is an awesome nucleophile because of the electron donating nature of the NH2 group, and we can see a lot of red, quite a bit more red than benzene, in fact, in the aromatic ring of, of aniline right here. And so these groups, NH2 and the aldehyde or formal group, can have big effects on the electron density within a benzene ring and its reactivity as a result. On this slide, we're comparing and contra contrasting inductive and resonance effects, inductive donating and withdrawing groups, and resonance donating and withdrawing groups. And let's actually start with inductive effects, which are new to us at least somewhat. Inductively withdrawing groups have bond dipoles that point towards the R group so that there's positive charge on the carbon that's in the aromatic ring. This leads to an inductive withdrawal of electrons. It makes, for example, this carbon that's directly attached to the R group quite electron deficient. And the effect diminishes the farther away we get from that group. This is a hallmark of inductive effects. On the other side of the coin, an inductively donating group has a bond dipole that points in the opposite direction so that this carbon linked to the R group receives electron density and ends up relatively electron rich. But again, the effect is sort of distance dependent. The farther we get from that R group, the less the effect it is, the less the uh, extent of the effect. And so this is a hallmark of inductive effects that the farther away we get, the weaker the effect. So groups can be withdrawing or donating by induction, and a lot of this comes down to electronegativity, the electronegativity of the R group. If it's more electronegative than carbon, the group is inductively withdrawing. You see that on the left. If the group is less electronegative than carbon, then it is donating by induction. Resonance effects we've seen in the context of what we previously called electron donating and withdrawing group groups, delocalization of pi electrons. We can understand these by pushing electrons, for example, right? So electron withdrawing groups by resonance tend to make these positions highlighted in blue electrophilic, and donating groups make those same positions nucleophilic. And if we look at the nucleophilic case first, the donating group case, you can see that pushing electrons toward the benzene ring puts negative charge within the ring. We can draw other resonance forms that shift that negative charge around to the other ortho and para positions to show why these positions are relatively nucleophilic or electron rich. And notice the difference in distance dependence here. Now we have ortho and para positions that are most strongly activated by resonance effects. Very different picture than the inductive picture up here. Likewise, for electron withdrawing groups, we can use electron flow like this to show how the withdrawing group pulls electron density out of the ring. That leads to a resonance structure like this with positive charge in the ring at an ortho position. And we can shift that charge around to the other ortho position and the para position like so. And so these positions highlighted in blue are relatively electrophilic in benzene substituted with a resonance electron withdrawing group. So there's a difference between inductive and resonance effects when it comes to donation and withdrawal. And although we sometimes need to think about both, we'll see a case later in the video where that comes up. Often resonance effects will win the day because these pi donation and withdrawal effects, the resonance effects 
are very strong, generally stronger than inductive effects. We previously noted that substituents like alkoxy, hydroxy, amino, and even the halogens, F, C, L, and Br, are electron donating by resonance, and we'll see that further down the slide. But if we think about electronegativity, we'll realize that these substituents are actually withdrawing by induction because they're more electronegative than carbon. So their bond dipoles with a carbon, for example, that's part of a benzene ring, point toward the heteroatoms. So these heteroatomic substituents are withdrawing by induction. On the other side of the coin, alkyl groups are donating by induction. These sp3 carbons that are attached to a conjugated system, which consists of sp2 or sp hybridized carbons, these are actually less electronegative than the sp2 and sp hybridized carbons, which means the bond dipole points in this direction, towards the aromatic ring or the conjugated system. We've previously seen that groups that are donating by resonance include amino, alkoxy, hydroxy, the halogens, a thioether group SR like this. And this is because they have lone pairs that can be donated into an attached pi system. We've seen that before. And all of these groups indeed have lone pairs on the atom directly connected to the aromatic ring. So these are donating by resonance, as we would say. Groups that are withdrawing by resonance are these classic electron withdrawing groups that we've seen that fit this pattern of an XY multiple bond polarized toward Y, such as the carbonyl group. And you see the classic electron flow here pulling from the aromatic ring and up to the oxygen, showing that electron withdrawing by resonance effects. And all of the other groups on this slide have a similar structural pattern. I encourage you to pause and draw curved arrows and maybe one other resonance structure that puts positive charge in each of these aromatic rings and puts negative charge inside the electron withdrawing group. One thing this slide highlights is that there's a tension in many cases between withdrawing by induction and donating by resonance. Alkoxy is a great example of this. The OR group is donating by resonance, that's shown right here, but it's withdrawing by induction. So what is it overall? Is it net electron donating or electron withdrawing? We answer that question on the next slide. Generally, resonance is more important than induction because pi electron donation is generally, or withdrawal, is generally stronger than the polarization of a sigma bond due to a difference in electronegativity for most normal atoms on the second row of the periodic table like nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. The one exception is the halogens. The halogens are electron withdrawing overall despite being donating by resonance. If you go back to the previous slide, their inductive withdrawal effect that we see at the top of this slide is more important and more significant than donation from the atom by resonance. And that is because they're quite electronegative and they're quite large, which affects the efficiency of pi donation, especially for atoms like bromine and iodine, which are especially large. So the overall picture we develop here is that net electron donating groups is any group that is donating by resonance except the halogens, amino, alkoxy, hydroxy, and even these that are connected to carbonyl groups. Notice here, this nitrogen and this oxygen, these are still electron donating groups, even though they're connected to carbonyl groups. They still fit that structural pattern of having a lone pair on the atom that is directly connected to the aromatic ring. They're just not as strongly donating as, for example, an NH2 or a dialkyl amino group would be. This is, this is the amide functional group, and it's not as strongly donating as NR2, but it is a donating group. Same with the ester group down below. It's not as strongly donating as an alkoxy, but it's still net electron donating overall. Net electron withdrawing groups are all of our resonance withdrawing groups plus the halogens, plus the halogens due to their strong electronegativity effects. And so, again, this is a good opportunity to pause, check your understanding of donating and withdrawing groups, and make sure you understand why these are all net electron donating, and why these are all net electron withdrawing, including this key exception of the halogens, which are electron withdrawing overall due to their strong inductive effect, despite being resonance donors.